Welcome back to Teach English Now. In the last video, we discussed the concept of taking risks and how important it is for a teacher to lower the effective filter so that students want to take risks. Hand in hand with that thought, however, is the need for a learner to know the proper ways to take risk. In other words, helping students learn correct language learner strategies will help give them more confidence, more motivation, and ultimately, better language skills. While I said that risk is good, not all risk is created equal. One more story. Francois Guan, smart or foolish? That is the question we must ask ourselves in today's story. Here are the facts. Francois Guan lived at the end of the 19th century and was a Latin and Greek professor from France. Sounds pretty smart so far, right? He also wrote books, and he was considered a predecessor of Charles Berlitz, who revolutionized language learning in his day. Perhaps Guan's most famous book, The Art and Teaching of Language, is something I think every language teacher should read, not only because of his ideas about language learning, but because of his experiences in trying to learn language himself. You see, just around 1880, Francois decided he wanted to learn German. So he left his teaching position for an entire year and moved to Hamburg, Germany. Good idea? Smart? I think so. He then spent the first 10 days doing what? Studying German in his room. Good idea? Smart? Mm. While in his room for 10 days, he first learned 248 irregular German verbs, studied a grammar book, and he refused to leave until he had committed it all to memory. Wow! After 10 days, he left his room and finally tried to test out his knowledge. He went to the university and listened in on classes. How do you think he did? Could he understand German? Not at all. In fact, he phrases it like this. Not a word, not a single word would penetrate to my understanding. Nay, more than this, I did not even distinguish a single one of the grammatical forms so newly studied. I did not recognize even a single one of the irregular verbs just freshly learnt, though they certainly must have fallen in crowds from the lips of the speaker. So, Francois went back to his room and shut the door again for another eight days. This time, he memorized 800 German roots and committed to memory the grammar book and irregular verbs again. And off to the university again. And, any guesses? Could he understand any words this time? Not a word. Now, I don't want to be too hard on poor Guan at this point. I admit, there are things I admire. He keeps trying. He never gives up. But he also keeps using the same strategy. Finally, this third time, he tries to change the strategy. Oh, how I love that. What does he do now? Is it smart? Let me tell you what he does. He goes down to a shop below his room. He actually leaves the room and tries talking with customers in the shop. He opens his mouth, tries to say a few things. Unfortunately, they laugh at him. <laughs> this makes things even worse. Poor, sensitive Francois, a professor, a genius, looks silly, just like every one of us learning a new language. Do you think, as a professor of languages, he was used to looking ridiculous? I don't either. In fact, do you think it is possible that sometimes being smart is what makes you foolish? Food for thought. Anyway, the story ends rather tragically. Guan, super embarrassed, returns to his room and tries translations. Doesn't work. Then he tries memorizing a book of dialogues. Nope, not that either. Then he spends a month memorizing 30,000 words in a dictionary. Nothing. Not a word. 
after one year of effort, guess what? Francois Guan goes home, having never learned German at all. Not a word. Now, what does this story illustrate, and what can we learn from it? It certainly re-emphasizes the idea that practice is an important part of language learning, and that memorizing simply isn't enough. Sure, that's true. But it also illustrates another point I'd like to make about language learners in general. First, everyone likes to look smart. And people like Francois Guan, adult learners of a language, are accustomed to looking smart. Second, because learners are accustomed to looking smart, they often choose language learning strategies that avoid looking foolish and taking risk. This is not to say that all his strategies are necessarily bad, but rather that in the absence of risk, his strategies are likely to increase learning, but not acquisition, which is our ultimate goal. Thanks for watching Teach English Now. We have shared a few stories now about how not to learn a language and the strategies learners often use that don't seem to work very well. In the next video, however, we will start presenting how good language learners use strategies that allow them to be more successful than their counterparts. See you then.